All right, I think we have our next speaker coming up. They are going to be Jay Harrell from QuantStamp, my friend and yours, talking about what is a digital nation. Jay, you ready? Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Great. Um, I'll take it away. Go right ahead. So yeah, I'll be talking about what a digital nation is today. Um, <clears throat> I'll be unpacking the terminology that has been thrown around the space for a while, um, Swarm, Web3, open value networks, etc. So that's kind of what I'm going to be doing. So, you know, we have this new paradigm. Well, it's been around for 30 years now. Well, 40 years now. But, you know, we went from web one to web two and we're going to web three. Web one was very passive. Web two interactive interactivity with users. And of course, web three um, is where we're going. Web two started to have problems because, of course, consolidation in the marketplace and you became the product so what we got was um, most of the internet controlled by a, a handful of few people a few companies and they're profiting off of the data that's generated so this idea of web3 kind of goes beyond that of decentralizing this and it includes vr spaces includes um, interactivity and um, many other kinds of spaces but we're going to kind of dive in more scoped more to um, uh, more blockchain-ish. So the future vision is, of course, there is no single entity um, controls, yet everyone can still trust it. It's decentralized. Uh, it has digital money, increased usage, usability, scalability. Individuals use the internet without giving up their privacy and data. It's an anti-fragile system. Again, it's transparent, opt-in, um, privacy when needed, secure and we have control over our own data. So we've, you know, people have mentioned this to add, add into them, so we, we all know this. However, you know, the mechanisms behind Web3 really start um, way back with open value networks. An early example is uh, Sensorica, essentially a collective accounting for equitable opt-in work. Um, and this model can be applied to open and decentralized networks. Uh, the idea is to, is to interact with other organizations as a collective, um, be highly adaptive, fully decentralized, and governed through uh, distributed decision-making processes and resource allocation. Um, unfortunately, uh, they weren't able to gain traction, um, but it did set the stage for, of course, DAOs. So, you know, we heard early terms like swarm, digital collectives, you know, removing um, silos of data and silos of just thinking. Um, so the idea of a DAO, it's a collective of like-minded individuals with common goals, digital organizations without central uh, servers, no leaders, hierarchies, rules defined um, uh, by a smart contract that run on a blockchain and uh, with a funding pool to issue new shares. The concept of DAOs have grown over the over the last few years. Decentralized organizations um, came to a, a head um, a little bit later. In fact, uh, TechCrunch even um, said that it's a paradigm shift in a variety, uh, in the very idea of economic organization. It offers complete transparency, total shareholder control, unprecedented flexibility, and autonomous governance. Of course, we all remember where we were, when uh, the DAO um, happened. Of course, it was created in 2016. It had grand vision of uh, serving as a decentralized funding mo model to empower development for both commercial and nonprofit purposes. Um, unfortunately, it was hacked and it created uh, a contentious chain fork, which ended up splitting Ethereum to Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. Um, I think the community learned a lot and you know we're we're better for it, unfortunately. This you know went to through an evolution, and since the attack, we communities formed DAOs to manage development use, um, ad adapted um, various cryptocurrencies without giving control to centralized governing bodies, and the traction just started to to form. And what did we get? We had the rebirth of DAOs. We had Moloch, Meta Cartel. In 2019, um, it, was, it reduced friction and organized people and resources. And by 2020, 
uh, it gave it actually came to a fold and gave re, uh, people a reason to cooperate. Ultimately, these these mechanisms of collective accounting are seen in various examples of of DAOs um, conceptually, like Gitcoin, which is more of a funding inwards and allocate work outwards via bounties. We started to see the growth of DeFi's and distributed storage systems and um, interfaces that make it easier for people to participate and vote. Um, these are some factors that drove the growth. While the success, while the, the concept was already there, it was becoming easier because we have successful examples to draw from, um, more mechanics and infrastructure, tools to mitigate some challenges around creating DAOs. And these DAOs are shaping our world through self-organization borderless communities. DAOs, web or web3 communities, um, offer a way to both uh, for both technical and non-technical community members to find unique niches that resonate with them. Just like the market provides uh, us options in terms of what we want to buy, DAOs and web3 communities gives us options for communities to shape the society that we live in. Um, and we're seeing this grow and grow and grow. SushiSwap is, is a, has, a, has a DAO as a smart contract, but operates as a decentralized op, uh, organization. Um, of course, it was launched in 2020, amidst the uh, DeFi summer. It was a code fork um, of Uniswap at the time. Um, without, at the time, Uniswap didn't have a native token. Um, and they position themselves as an evolved community or oriented version of Uniswap. Of course, we all know what happened. Um, there was too much trust in one person. And uh, Chef, the pseudonymous uh, founder, Chef Nomi, rugged everyone, but of course later returned the, the funds and relinquished control. And now SushiSwap ultimately became uh, community run. And we're seeing, you know, we're seeing communities in art spaces, right? Super Rare uh, is a marketplace for single edition digital artwork. It aims to offer the best collector experience for digital art. It's essentially um, like an NFT gallery. It uses more of a curator model. Um, and NFTs are driving this mainstream, uh, mainstream growth. Another example is Zora. Um, Zora it ha increases liquidity um, for limited edition goods, putting control back into the hands of creators, giving uh, them community, giving the community power to create tokens and actually be a platform for various platforms. Speaking of community tokens, St. Fame DAO, decentralized brand organization that sold Fame tokens tied to a limited edition uh, shirt created by crypto designer Matthew Vernon uh, collab collaborated with uh, Grammy award winning singer song or sorry songwriter producer and web three artist uh, RAC to crowd sale a limited edition cassette tape version of the same name and he heads his own community on discord and and twitch so we're seeing these these like this idea of like community mechanics really really start to take hold on the music industry alone, uh, of the $40 billion music industry, only 12% is ever captured by the artist. So royalty distribution is a problem and NF NFTs are fundamentally changing how we think of this. Personally, I think uh, DRM is a bad application of NFTs just because there's no collectability element and so there's not really a, a reason to, to, to mint them. Um, and of course, Blau, released a single in 2021, Everything on Nifty Gateway in January. Uh, he believes NFTs may become the fastest onboarding tool for uh, fans and artists to join the Web3 ecosystem. I love the quote that he, he gave. I envision a future where limited edition NFTs of songs or albums follow a similar structure to prints and photography or lithographs in art. Collectors are driven towards owning an authenticated copy that is digitally signed by the original creator or artist simply because that collector has a deeper personal relationship with the song, which I think is very powerful. And if you look at uh, gaming communities, Axie Infinity is creating, or has been creating a digital pet universe. Players can earn tokens through gaming. 
But more than that, it's actually a play to earn model. Uh, people have opportunities to build the platform, play on the platform, and and just work towards the growth of the entire platform itself. And recently, um, a, some land on the platform sold for $1.5 million. So this idea of passion work, community work, and engaging social jobs as a platform is what we're starting to see in these digital nations. Skyweaver is another example. It's, it's essentially, you know, you can think of it like Magic the Gathering, but digital NFTs are the cards and they won't be additional minted. Um, but you own the card and it's on Ethereum and it's not owned or controlled by a AAA studio. Raid Guild is a fantastic example of, of one that provides a service. So they're a dev agency um, of the for the Web3 ecosystem. So they're a dev agency for Web3 ecosystem, a decentralized collective of mercenaries ready to slay your Web3 product demons. Really, they're a, a diverse group of talent hailing from the Meta, Meta Cartel network, um, but they operate like a DAO on a Discord, and they, as a collective, interact with other collectives or organizations. Um, in fact, we have even audited projects uh, from DAOs themselves before. Wall Street Bets actually operates as a DAO. They're, uh, what, what are they? They're a Reddit board um, with a community of like-minded individuals, decentralized structure, no leaders or hierarchy. And what do they do? They act like a decentralized um, fund, uh, large fund. So all of these ideas since open value networks, if we come back to that model and we apply it to say the existing crypto market stack uh, using SushiSwap, um, you know, I took this, this, uh, this picture in the corner from actually from the Federal Reserve uh, Bank of St. Louis, um, where they quoted DeFi has unleashed a wave of innovation in the financial industry. And I think that's a really special thing to see because people are taking notice. So what do we have here, right? We have this community that surrounds the commons, which is a bunch of tools, which all work towards core products, reasons, or value prop. You know, in the tool sets, we have Discord, we have Snapshot, we have documentation. And then of course, the, the observer is crypto Twitter and Chef Nomi rugged and sent to an exchange. But if you zoom out, you have a network of interoperable communities with various value props for different people with different political affiliations, how the incentive mechanisms are built and how the community takes care of themselves is community dependent. Um, token rewards make sense in this model um, as it provides uh, an opportunity for not just primary, but also secondary and tertiary um, in network work, assuming the core product benefits uh, as a, produces a benefit and incentive that exceeds the needs of the core of the core needs of said community. This example of post internet platformism exemplifies a system where participants own the means of production via governance uh, token mechanics. Not every model needs to include, to uh, needs to include a, include a no native governance token, but some do. The next step is turning these mechanics into systems that can produce public good or even public goods that go beyond that of the network participants, of in-network participants. So we're seeing these self-organized borderless communities. These are digital nations. Uh, communities are built from the ground up. Primary focus is on community. Profit is secondary. There's an equalizing effect, uh, opportunities for people all over the world to partake in early stage product development and equity financing. So where does this leave us? This leaves us with, this DeFi Web3 DAO stack um, of infrastructure, applications on top of that, um, with also their own communities, very likely, all of that running on Ethereum or maybe another um, uh, another chain, but by and large Ethereum, and then all of that sitting on on BTC. So we have this 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 interlocking, um, growing uh, nation. And so where does Quantstamp fit in? 
So of course, we're proud to secure some of the most innovative communities within art, music, gaming, and more. And we strive to secure the assets and infrastructure in your digital nation. Thank you very much for joining me. If you'd like to read more um, about ETH2, DeFi hacks, NFT, BTC liquidity, or more, go to our blog, quantstamp.com slash blog. Um, if you want to hear just the, the updates of our best stuff over the month, uh, scan that QR code and you'll you'll be linked to the to sign up for to the newsletter. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you so much for uh, coming here, Jay. That was a great presentation. Everyone hit up Quantstamp. Everyone follow Jay on Twitter. Thank you, everyone.